Hypnosis is not new. It is very old. And the fact that it was recently used in at least one robbery, yeah, one crime in Kenya, in a place called Kembu, should be of great concern to Kenyans. Why? Because we're in the season of election fever. And during this season, historically in Kenya, we've always had crimes. They yeah, are crime waves. Yeah. All of them designed to raise funds for some evil politicians. And this is what this video is all about. And if you're interested in movies, stick with me till the end because I refer you to a very interesting, very recent movie yeah, that is based on hypnosis and how it is used in crime. Very educative as well as being very entertaining. Yeah, so make sure you catch it. Karibu sana to my show today. Enjoy. There is a pattern that emerges in every general election we have in Kenya that I've been trying to emphasize, but which most Kenyans have still not seen. And this issue is especially important because it impacts all of us. Even those of us who are not following politics, it affects us. And this is the fact that before every general election in Kenya, from as far back as anybody can remember, we always have a season of crime linked to politicians raising money for their campaigns. Right from the 70s, when we used to have dramatic bank robberies, yeah, where the thugs would get away with huge sums of money and would never be arrested. Right up to the most recent general elections, of 2017 when we had a spate of robberies on M-Pesa shops and very sadly some of those robberies ended up in Kenyans losing their lives. Folks, this is serious business. Now it appears that the 2022 season yeah, is proving to be one where these robberies are very sophisticated and executed in such a way that they don't draw public attention, let alone anybody wanting to link them to politics. One of those sophisticated crimes is the wash wash business, yeah, which involves conning Kenyans out of huge sums of money. Well, that one has been slowed down considerably. Yeah. When it was exposed yeah, by the tea master, Edgar Barry. And as a result of that expose, where he mentioned quite a number of prominent personalities, even politicians were mentioned. Very interesting. Yeah. As a result of that expose, it has become very difficult for the wash wash business to thrive anymore. Yeah, because of course Kenyans are super alert and this thing has drawn a lot of public attention which is the last thing these people want. And then there's something else, another kind of crime, yeah, very new in this part of the world. Crime involving hypnosis. Oh yes, you hypnotize people 
and by the time they come back to their senses, you have vanished with a huge sum of money. And of course it is easy to see why this kind of crime is perfect for these people. Yeah? Because first of all when you mention hypnosis, you lose a large chunk of the public. What is that? Superstition? Ah, rubbish. Nothing like that can happen. Talk to those people who are robbed properly. There's something they're not telling us. There's something they're hiding. Hypnosis does not exist. Yeah, that's the view of many Kenyans. Which is okay. People are allowed to be ignorant. People are allowed to believe what they want to believe. Without even digging a little deeper into the facts. Indeed, let me give you one fact that will shock many of you. Investigators, the police department, in many parts of the world, and especially in the United States of America, use hypnosis experts to solve crimes. Oh yes, Google it. It's a reality. They use this thing that does not work, according to some, to solve crimes. Let me give you a quick example. Somebody witnesses a crime and they see the guilty party getting away. But they can't remember the registration plate of the vehicle. Yeah, they got away in. That information is buried somewhere deep in the subconscious. And it gets even more interesting. This method they have used to obtain evidence is accepted by a court of law. And the guilty person is convicted based on evidence which was gathered using hypnosis. <laughs> oh yes. My strong advice, if you don't know enough about a subject, research it. Yeah, Go and get more information about it. It is extremely easy, easier than it has ever been in the history of mankind, to get information these days, yeah, at least information like that. I often wish it was as easy for the kind of information I look for. Anyway, those are the facts. Now, about a week and a half ago, there was a very fascinating robbery that took place somewhere in Kiambu, where the perpetrators used hypnosis yeah, to get away with a large sum of money. They were very well organized. And from the CCTV footage, yeah, they were not even were Africa. They were Asians or some people from some eastern countries. Some eastern countries, by the way, are known to be world leaders in hypnosis. But in my view, something went wrong in this particular Kiambu incident. You see, in hypnosis, when you come out of it, it is very difficult to even remember what happened. Yeah? There's a section of your life that goes missing. You can't remember what happened. In this particular case, the last thing the poor lady was robbed would have remembered was somebody handing over an old 50 shillings note to her. Now put yourself in her situation. Yeah, your employers come and you try and explain to them money is missing. I have no idea how the money went missing. What do you think would happen? The police would be called. They would be arrested. End of story. They are responsible. They have either to pay back the money or go to prison. End of story. The perfect crime. Because even the person who's robbed can't remember. However, in a few instances, especially if there was a gap in the hypnosis, yeah, or they left out a detail, it is possible that something can trigger their memory to remember at least some of the details. At least enough details to get the CCTV footage and fill in the rest of the blanks. And that is where I'm thinking it's quite possible for the people who engineered this haste. Yeah, it is quite possible that they had no idea that the place had a camera. You know it is possible, which I think is a very good idea sometimes, to have hidden cameras, yeah, which somebody scouting the location will not be able to see. And sometimes even those working there have no idea that they're being watched, yeah, that there's a camera on the premises. 
I have very strong suspicions that this is exactly what happened in this most fascinating Kembu case. And the saddest thing of all is the fact that many Kenyans are playing right into the hands of these criminals by dismissing the incident, ignoring it. Because if my theory is correct, and I believe it is, then the season we're in right now suggests that it is going to happen many, many times before the next general elections. And who knows, you could be the next victim. Because maybe by the time people start realizing what is happening, it will be too late. Now I want to refer you to a movie, yeah, in case you have Netflix, into a movie I recently took in on Netflix, yeah, which covers this topic and how it can be used in crime. The movie stars Angelina Jolie, yeah, who is known to many of you, I'm sure. You can get some more information about that movie on the link on the top right hand corner of your screens right now and repeated in the description area below. I highly recommend that you find some time to take in this movie because you're going to learn a lot. Yeah? And then maybe, in case you're ignorant, your ignorance will vanish. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.